insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 126, Gaslighting. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my poised and confident co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm, um, uh, fine. How about you? Wow, that sounded so unfine. I couldn't even describe it. (laughs) Um, Clearly, you're not fine. Is it anything Mm. you wanted to talk about? Uh, just had a rough day, I guess. Rough day. Well, it's, the week's almost over, right? Well, not for me. <laughs> All right. Clearly, I'm not going to say anything to uh, satisfy you today. We'll just have to have a miserable show today. I'm not going to be miserable during this show. Relax. Oh, okay. Um. So you had a big weekend last weekend. You had your first marching band competition. How'd that go? Uh, we got second place, which was nice. That's pretty good. Pretty good. We've got a busy weekend, too. We've got uh, a football game. You got a halftime performance at a football game this weekend. And then you have another competition this weekend. So, should be interesting. Yep. Looking forward to it? I guess. Okay, well. That's some fake enthusiasm. We like that. I mean, I like the football games. The competition is just the one that I'm like. "Mm." Takes a long time, huh? Kind of. Makes for a very long day. Yeah. Uh, You'll get through it. I'm sure you'll get through it. You'll have a good time, hopefully. But surprisingly, that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we are talking about gaslighting. Now, this is a topic that's been tossed around a lot and people use the phrase a lot and i don't think a lot of people really understand what gaslighting really means or where it comes from so what do people technically think gaslighting is well i think a lot of people use it as just a derogatory term for someone who's dismissing someone okay and while that kind of is true it's it's much deeper than that and as we get into it you'll see it's much more insidious than that It's not just a a matter of pretending my reality is different than yours. And and that's how it's used a lot today, especially in political circles. You know, you'll hear, oh, so-and-so is gaslighting uh, such-and-such's campaign or something like that where you have what a lot of people refer to as reality distortion fields. Uh, This happened a lot during the Trump presidency where the – News and the media would ask questions, and then they would get what, at one point in time, someone very cleverly within the administration called alternative facts. How you have alternative facts to actual facts, I don't know, but that was one form of gaslighting. Okay. So this week, we are going to talk about the term that is used a lot in the media, but often misunderstood, called gaslighting. It's thrown around a lot, but most people don't know what it refers to. It really refers to a form of mental abuse that's far too widespread in today's society. We'll talk about what gaslighting is, the origins of the term, signs that it's happening, and steps to stop it from happening to you or to your loved ones. Before we do that, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can get video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're available pretty much any place you can get a podcast. Uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, Podbean, uh, Castro, Buzzsprout, and so forth. I would also invite everyone to uh, write in, give us your feedback. We're always looking for 
feedback on how we're doing on the show, show suggestions, and so forth, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're available on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. We can get links to all of our social media and much more on our official website at insights into things.com. Ready to get started? Yep. All right, here we go. So what is gaslighting? This definition comes to us from a very well-written article on NBCNews.com. Psychologists use the term gaslighting to refer to a specific type of manipulation where the manipulator is trying to get someone else or a group of people to question their own reality, memory, or perceptions. And it's always a serious problem, according to psychologists. The term gaslighting actually comes from a 1938 play called Gaslight, where a husband manipulates his wife to make her think she's actually losing her sense of reality so he can commit her to a mental institution and steal her inheritance. Nice guy, huh? Yeah, that's a real nice love story there. So not all real life examples are so diabolical. It may start out with seemingly small offenses, but the problem is that even more or less insignificant instances of questioning your own judgment or reality, thanks to deliberate intent of someone else, can snowball. You can end up in a cycle of not being able to negotiate your daily life in a way where you are clear-minded, can focus, can make sound decisions, and have a sense of well-being. Gaslighting happens in a variety of different relationship types. In personal relationships, think of an abusive spouse or, in rarer cases, a parent. In professional relationships, such as a manipulative boss or a co-worker preying on a subordinate. Even by public figures, there are several examples of gaslighting by former President Donald Trump and his administration, which the site provided. Uh, no matter whether it's happening in marriage between a leader and his or her constituency constituency, or elsewhere, it's important to be aware of the red flags that you or someone you know might be a victim, which is the first step to getting out of an abusive situation. And kind of hearing the definition of this um, reminds me of a story we were kind of reading in um, ELA called The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. And um, basically the message in it was kind of to question traditions and such. Basically, the tradition of the lottery is an extreme example of just completely committing to traditions entirely. So, based on this this definition, though, do you think you've ever been gaslighted by someone, or do you think you've ever gaslighted someone without even knowing it? Um, I mean... I've ha I have changed my perspective on various things. I don't think it's like the extreme example of mental manipulation to the point where like my entire belief system has completely been shattered. Um so I don't think I've necessarily been gaslighted like badly, like I don't think anyone really manipulated me that way. Right. See, and I've had this situation happen with employers in the past. Um, one particular employer several years ago had, they were big on inspirational messages and they liked to lead through these catchphrases and, and they thought they had some effect on morale. So this one particular manager, this uh, uh, officer in the company got up in front of the entire company at one time in a meeting and he gave this example of, we need to be more like geese in this company. And you look around the room and everyone's kind of scratching their heads like, what are you talking about? And he goes on to say, well, what geese do is they fly in a V formation. And when that lead goose gets tired, and he's referring to the, the CEO of the company at that time, 
When that lead goose gets tired, they have to fall back, and then somebody else comes up and take the lead. And he's kind of equating that to himself, where the CEO had just gone through kind of a a, a bad press situation with the company and had a kind of a, a mess something up in the company, and he was giving the example of him stepping up. And, and he says, you know, the next goose steps up in line, and that's how that formation continues to fly with a new leader up there. And everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah, they all kind of like nodded their heads and, and left the room with this idea that this guy's trying to take over the lead. So I, after the meeting, I went and I talked to him, and I said, you're not from around here, are you? He says, oh, no, I'm from, I'm from upstate New York. I said, well, that was a very interesting example that you gave. However, reality here is a little bit different. It's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, in New Jersey, we have Canadian geese. And Canadian geese, around the turn of the 20th century, had been hunted nearly to extinction. And Canadian geese would migrate up and down the eastern coast from Canada down to Florida. And they were hunted to near extinction. So New Jersey enacted laws that would protect the geese. And they were an endangered species. So as a result, they were held in these uh, wildlife sanctuaries in New Jersey and nursed back to high populations. And as a result of that, they lost their migratory instincts. So now in New Jersey, when the geese take up and take off and they fly, they go off, they fly around in circles and they come back. And the problem we have is they keep defiling where they land because they poop all over the place. He didn't like the fact that I was giving him a factual answer to that because he had this reality in mind of this grand goose leading the rest of the flock onto some promised land or something like that. So he was in effect trying to gaslight the entire company with this image that he contrived when everybody else who was from New Jersey basically laughed at this guy because they knew what the geese did and, and I kind of described it to him. He's the New Jersey swans. Yes, the New Jersey swans. That's what and, I call them now. But, you know, in New Jersey, they really are a problem because they're they're defiling public places. You've got people that have uh, dogs that professionally chase them. So for him to kind of gaslight the company like that was kind of funny. It was a long, drawn-out way of kind of getting to the point here. But yeah. he didn't realize he was gaslighting the company. He basically had a, a – he wanted to be a, a inspirational poster. And that's yeah. what he was. So in him doing it, he wasn't trying to be nefarious or manipulative or anything. He was trying to be inspirational. So it just goes to show you that gaslighting isn't always necessarily done with negative intent. Yeah. Sometimes people gaslight you to try to get you to see their point of view. Instead of trying to wing you over to their side, they try to manipulate you to their side. And that's kind of where it gets kind of dangerous. Mm. So let's talk about when and where does gaslighting actually happen. So gaslighting actually happens in a power dynamic, but it's not always intentional or malicious. The manipulator holds enough power that the target of the gaslighting is terrified to change up the relationship or step out of the gaslighting dynamic because of the threat of losing that relationship or the threat of being seen as less than who you want to be seen as by them. It's, it's a real threat to them. If it's happening by someone you love and care about, like a spouse or a parent, you're going to want to believe the other person, and the gaslighter may use that against you. Many people in this case, the targets of gaslighting, change their perception in order to avoid conflict. The gaslighter doesn't necessarily need to be acting with malicious intent, nor does the gaslighter necessarily need to realize that he or she is gaslighting another person for it to be happening, kind of like you said with your example. Right. It might be a result of how you were raised. Maybe your parents had very dry, cut-and-dry beliefs, and that certainty is how they, and now you, see the world, and when someone sees things differently, you assume something is wrong with them. Maybe you're upset because you think your boyfriend is always flirting with other girls. 
What you don't see is that it's the girls that are flirting with him, but he's just being polite. But your worldview doesn't allow you to question that, to question that maybe you're getting the situation wrong. You make him think that you know way more about relationships, and there's something wrong with him that he's not able to see the error in his ways. Maybe at first you don't believe it, but over time you may come to think that maybe he's right. So the other interesting thing to look at here <clears throat> is the dynamic of two people who don't see eye to eye is usually the healthy situation is one of debate. You and I debate often, and it's not necessarily because we don't see eye to eye. It's because one's trying to educate the other and one has questions about that. So what happens in, in that situation is I have my point of view, you have yours. I make my points, you make yours, and then we provide counterpoints. And sometimes we agree to disagree and we don't meet on terms. Other times, you may sway me to your side of the argument based on the point and counterpoint discussion, but you're not manipulating me at that point. Yeah. You're convincing me at that point. That's the healthy dynamic. Hmm. With gaslighting, you simply ignore what I'm saying and, or you pretend that what I'm saying is so crazy and off the wall and unbelievable that nobody would possibly think that way. And in a way, you dismiss my my point of view. And you you do it in such a way that I start to question my own view. Like, wow, maybe she's right. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe what she's saying is right. Then you're manipulating me. You're not convincing me. Yeah. So that's where that fine line really is. So if anyone tries to do that to you, if they're dismissing your point of view, if they don't want to listen to your point of view, if every counterpoint they have is not supporting their argument but shooting down yours, then they're trying to gaslight you. Mm. And it's important to remember that. Okay. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about how gaslighting actually happens. All right. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So how does gaslighting happen? According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline's fact sheet, the techniques a gaslighter might use to manipulate someone can include the following. Withholding. This is when he or she refuses to listen or says they don't understand. There's also countering. When the abuser questions the gaslighting mem gaslightee's memory of an event. There's blocking or diverting. When the abuser changes the subject or questions the victim's thinking. Then we have trivializing, making the victim's needs or feelings seem unimportant. And finally, we have forgetting or denial. When the manipulator pretends to have forgotten what actually happened or denies something he or she had previously agreed to. And note that a gaslighter will oftentimes start with something that is true that you might be particularly sensitive about in order to hook you. A co-worker, for example, who tries to convince you that you're not pulling your weight in the office might bring up the fact that you complain all the time about being tired because of your kids. 
you may be feeling tired because your kids have activities that require your attention, and that coworker may have heard you complaining about it once or twice. But that doesn't necessarily mean that your performance is changing because of it. So now we're going to look at signs that you're a victim of gaslighting. So look for these warning signs and red flags that this type of abuse might be happening to you or someone you know. You're constantly second-guessing yourself or have trouble making decisions. You're... Ruminating? Ruminating about a perceived character flaw, like being too sensitive or not, good or not a good enough person. You feel confused about your relationship. If you find yourself thinking, I thought I had this great husband, but I just feel crazy all the time. Or, I thought I had this charming partner, but then sometimes I feel like I'm losing it when we're together. In a co confrontation with the person that might be gaslighting you, you feel like you're su you suddenly find yourself in an argument you don't intend to have. You're not making progress, or you're saying or you're saying the same thing over and over again and not being heard. You feel fuzzy or unclear about your thoughts, feelings, or beliefs. You're always apologizing. You're frequently making excuses for your partner's behavior. You can't always understand why you're not happy. You can't understand why you're not happy in your own life. You know something is wrong, but you just don't know what. It so, an interesting indication if you're being gaslighted is that you're generally not happy with the situation. Yeah. And and that's how the gaslighter kind of gets to you. And they, they make you question yourself. They make you question your thoughts and your judgment. And they set you up for a lack of self-confidence. And then once they've, they've kind of bored this hole into your psyche, they then pour themselves into that with their own thoughts and their own ideas, and they try to think for you. That's really what gaslighting is. Yeah. And it's kind of a slippery slope because once someone starts to gaslight you and they see the control that they have, they're more likely to take it even further. It's kind of like that old adage that power corrupts, ultimate power corrupts, ultimately. The more power you have over someone, the more power you want. Yeah. And sadly, that's just human nature. So someone may not start out with the intent of doing that. May, they may start out with the intent of debating you. And when they see that you're not coming around to their point of view, then they may switch to some of the, the lighter gaslighting techniques, not listening to your side of the argument, so that all you hear is them talking over you. Then they may go to something a little bit deeper, and have, you know, start having you question your own thoughts and your own argument. And ultimately, their goal is to win the argument. But in the process of doing that, they wind up manipulating you. And then once they've manipulated you, the next time they want you to do something, they've already got you on the hook for it. And that's the first technique that they go for. So it's kind of a dangerous thing. And I know this is kind of a odd topic for us to be discussing. The reason I, I wanted to bring it up is it's prevalent in today's society. And it's something that is all over social media. You see all this false information to the point, you know, let's talk about vaccines, for instance. You have all this information out there that's all these sources that are producing false information about vaccines and statistics and all this stuff. And it's to the point now that you actually have some of the social media sites are actually finally cracking down on this and, and banning it. But all of those fake things that you see out there are attempts at gaslighting. You know, people are trying to push an agenda that is in many cases, not backed by science or facts, but it's their agenda and they want to push it or they're pushing it for someone else. Mm -hmm. And because it's not solid factual information, they couldn't possibly win that argument in a debate. Yeah. So they have to resort to gaslighting you and manipulating you to see their way. Yeah. 
So what are your thoughts on, in general, debating and, and winning? How important is it for you to win a debate or an argument when you engage with someone? I don't necessarily feel like I, like, want to win the argument unless I feel that the other person's argument isn't necessarily, I guess, morally all right or something right. that I feel like could be dangerous. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. You're trying to stop them from hurting themselves or hurting someone else. Yeah, and, like, I have no problem with debating. I honestly kind of like hearing other people's perspective on things, and it kind of makes me question my own uh, thoughts in a good way. Yeah. Like, like maybe I was thinking, maybe I could find a new perspective on this. That's kind of what I th normally think about when I debate. That's what I feel debating is. It's, like, sharing your perspectives and kind of, like, Debating about them and, you know, taking some information and stuff. Debating for me has always been an educational experience. And a lot of times, I used to write a blog years ago. And one of the things that I would do in that blog is I would not debate necessarily, but I would advocate a point of view that I didn't necessarily agree with. But I would advocate that point of view because in writing the blog it made me do the research and it made me put myself in the mindset of somebody who thought different than me and in doing that it allowed me to see the issue from the other side and after doing that I didn't always see it and understand it and agree with it from their perspective but it gave me a new appreciation and a new respect for that perspective. And anytime I debate someone, that's what it brings forth with me. Like I'm, I'm involved in, in Twitter and a few other social media. And I get into political debates. Because you can't avoid it. Because social media is a cesspool when it comes to that stuff. Yeah. And there's one particular individual on there who is diametrically opposed to me from a philosophical standpoint on everything. And there are times that he'll make a comment and I'll re respond to it with my point of view. And we'll go back and forth and debate and debate and debate and finally get to the point where we'll concede certain points of view. Where I'll kind of agree with him, but not entirely. So you, you, got, a, you got a valid point there, but look at it from my perspective. And he will. And... Eventually, we almost always get to the point where we're amicable about it. And for me, that's a refreshing thing on social media because there's so much toxicity on social media right now. Yeah. It's to the point that if you don't agree with me, then you're against me and I hate you for it. Yeah. And that hatred just boils over in, in social media. Yeah. So this debate partner that I happen to have is really a great exercise for me to have that opposite perspective on things because it helps to ground me. Because sometimes I get a little self-righteous. Sometimes I get up on my soapbox and I'll put an argument out there that is more emotional than factual. And he'll, he'll back me down. He'll call me on a carpet on it and, and back me down and I'll... I'll realize where, where the holes in my argument are. And it helps me to refine my point of view. And it helps me to appreciate his. So debate is a good thing. And I think the people who gaslight inadvertently fail to see that. And they fail to see the benefit of it. Yeah. It's not about getting the world to see your point of view. Everyone's going to have a different point of view. It's about being able to find common ground mm -hmm. and regardless of how diametrically I may be opposed to somebody else's philosophy, there's always common ground. You just have to find it mm -hmm. and you're not going to do that through gaslighting and manipulation. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my point to that. Do that. Um, let's take another break and we're going to come back and talk about what to do if somebody is gaslighting you. Alrighty. We'll be right back. Insights 
Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about gaslighting. And now we're going to talk about what to do if someone is gaslighting you. So the first thing we have here is identify the problem. Recognizing the problem is the first step. Once something has a name, you can begin to address it specifically. Sometimes writing down specifics from a conversation that can that you can look back to later when you're out of the he- when you're out of the heat of the moment can be helpful in sorting out the truth from disor- distortion. Give yourself permission to feel what you feel. Part of the problem with gaslighting is that it results in the victim questioning his or her own thoughts, values, perceptions, or feelings. Acknowledge that what you feel is what you feel so that you can take whatever action you need to take to feel better. Give yourself permission to make a sacrifice. Part part of what makes it... Really? Sorry. <laughs> no one saw that, so... No. <laughs> part of what makes it tough for a victim to leave a gaslit situation is that the abuser is someone they care about, they look up to, or they have a relationship with. You may have a lot of wonderful things going on in that relationship, but it's not worth it if it's undermining your reality. To start to regain your sense of self that you've lost, you may need to cut that person off, give up some of the wonderful things, or live with that person not having such a high opinion of you. So you start with, as with most things, with small decisions. Try to get out of or stop a gaslight. Take a step, one step at a time, And say no. Don't engage in an argument that's clearly a power struggle. Sometimes it's hard to recognize those. Get a second opinion. Ask a friend or family member you trust if they think your thinking is as off as your potential abuser says it is. Have compassion for you. Having compassion for yourself is very important. You are responsible for you. You need to be honest with yourself Maybe tomorrow your partner will be great, but focus on what you're feeling in the moment. Recognize when you have those feelings. So, I mean, these are some very basic things to do, but I think the most important thing here is to recognize when it's happening. Yeah. You know, recognize how it's making you feel. Anytime anybody makes you feel bad about yourself, you really have to question that relationship. Um, have you ever had a situation where people or, or a friend or someone made you feel bad about yourself for any reason? Um, I mean, the few times it did happen, um, we did kind of find the error of our ways and we were able to be friends again. Right. Um... Um, probably the, I've never had, like, a necessarily toxic relationship to the point where, like, someone outright said something that hurt my feelings or made me feel bad about myself. Um, I have lost touch with people for various reasons, um, but 
I don't think it was necessarily like a toxic relationship. Well, and the thing is, a lot of times when that sort of thing happens, it's not done intentionally or maliciously. A lot of times when somebody says something or does something, it's an inadvertent thing. It's an inadvertent consequence. You know, you may say something in the heat of the moment because you're agitated or you're upset or you're annoyed or you're not in a state of mind where you're normally calm and collected Mm -hmm. and you say something and the other person gets upset by that. They may not know that you're agitated and they may think that you're being malicious and then it spirals out of control. Yeah. And when something like that happens, somebody has to sort of put the brakes on, stop, apologize, get to the bottom of it and say, look, you know, this was, this was not meant to be mean or malicious It may be a simple, you know, I may come home and have a a rough day at work and I may be short with mommy and mommy, fortunately, mommy knows me well enough and I know her well enough that when we're in that agitated state, the other can tell and like I'll, when mommy's like that, okay, so when mommy's like that, I'll try to get her out of that mood. And I'll joke and I'll poke fun and stuff like this to kind of try to snap her out of that. And in doing that, sometimes I push the wrong button. And when I do, I, I'm fortunately intelligent enough to read that reaction and back off. Mm-hmm. I give her space. She cools off. And then we come back. And mommy does the same for me. Usually mommy's not in any jeopardy of pushing those buttons with me though. She's usually a little bit more um, sensitive and she's better at that than I am. Let me just put it that way. Yeah. (laughs) But we've been together for a long time now. Longer than you've been alive actually. Yeah. So we kind of know each other. But I have this sort of thing with people at work frequently. I just had an incident with my boss at work where – My intention was to try to point out a potential concern I had in a, in a thing at work and it was misinterpreted as something completely different. And the person reacted in a way that I wasn't expecting. And I kind of read that at that point and said, all right, I'm going to back off peace offering hands up. I surrender. Let's just you know, start this over again. It was never my intention for, for, for it to get to that point. Um, and it may have been, she was having a bad day that day. Maybe she had an argument with her husband. Maybe, uh, she had a, a unruly customer she was dealing with. I don't know. So I can't jump to conclusions. So I kind of have to give her the benefit of the doubt there. And, What happens with the gaslighting is gaslighters see that and then they switch into this manipulative mode and they don't read the signs and they don't do things in a constructive way. So that's really what you have to be on the lookout for. And anytime that you're in a relationship, whether it's professional, whether it's a loved one, whether it's somebody you're dating, if they make you feel bad about yourself, For any reason, you have to question that relationship. You don't question yourself because at no point in time should that relationship dynamic be one where they should be making you feel bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're going to question anything. Question the relationship first. And that should lead you down the right path to stop that gaslighting. Okay. All right. Uh, That's about all we had today. Uh, Let's take a very quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts, and then we'll finish up with the business of the podcast. We'll be right back. Go with your closing thoughts. Alrighty, so to everyone out there, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that a lot of the times gaslighting is never a good thing, and... I hope that, if anything, this podcast helped you kind of realize or get a better definition of what it really is so that 
in your life, uh, whether it be in the media or with your own relationships, you can recognize when gaslighting or when you're being gaslighted and help and hopefully put a stop to it so that you don't have to deal with it. Excellent. Sage advice as always. Thank you. Before we go, I do want to once again uh, remind you that if you want to subscribe to this podcast, you can find us listed as Insights into Things for Audio. All the network's podcasts can be found on video, listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I would also uh, invite you to write in. Give us your feedback. Give us your suggestions for shows. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can write to us. Uh, you can DM us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find high res versions of our shows on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can also find audio versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com or you can get links to all of our social media on our official website at insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.